Hello again, I am Blunty, and a week ago I encouraged people to check out PSO2 New Genesis, a game that is, in everything but name, an entirely separate entity from PSO2, and is really, really, Fantasy Star Online 3, an entirely new game in everything but name. And I feel like I keep having to repeat this whenever I talk about it, because for dumb marketing and psychological reasons, it is named in such a way that it can, will, and has, and will continue to be confusing for some people who think it's some kind of next-gen remake of PSO2, or some kind of seasonal expansion, or some kind of next-gen upgrade or something. But what it is, is a free-to-play action RPG massively multiplayer online game with a smooth, fast-flowing PvE combat system, a range of power fantasy abilities and class choices and interesting ways to mix and match the above all in an open world map made up of instanced field areas each supporting between 8 and 32 players in the local area at one time for balance reasons and every couple of hours or so a special time limited urgent quest may trigger for small groups of high powered players to take on massive super powerful bosses in either arena or dungeon run style quests. And I encouraged people to check it out because as far as free-to-play games go, it's running on a pretty fair system with little to no of what most people would consider consequential or pay-to-win systems and with genuinely fun gameplay built around power fantasy and with character customization, not built around tricking you into feeling like you're missing out if you don't start paying up. But what it also is, for many, many players out there right now, is a disappointingly thin experience with a lot less actual game in there than they were assuming, expecting, or hoping for. By Japanese standards, the amount of content here for MMOs like this, and indeed for the original PSO2 when it first launched, is pretty par for the course, actually. By Western standards, it's... Well, let me put it this way. I personally reached full end game as it stands at launch in less than two days. This means I finished the story that's included so far. Consider it chapter one of an ongoing story arc. It doesn't bother me much, the story in this game isn't the interesting part, it's not even that vital to the experience. You can skip through most of the dialogue scenes and really not miss anything vital to actually playing the game, really. It's just a bit of thematic window dressing, really, for those who enjoy that. But I also exhausted every last one of the main and side quests in the game in that time. There's literally, literally nothing left to encourage my further progress. There are no quests left at all from any of the NPCs. Yeah, there's daily quests, which so far have been utterly divorced from any NPC or world interaction pretty much, and are literally just menu options that I can tick off that ask me to collect 10 of some random item from a specific field, or that I eat a food item once, or that I use a booster once, or that I defeat X number of enemies in a given location once. The weekly quests have just been, well, finished several days of dailies. There's also some rather meaningless daily login bonuses, just a small full of handful consumable items, welcome, but hardly compelling to bring me back, and again, all without any kind of interaction with the game's world itself. It's just pops when you log in and that's that. And aside from literally running out of actual content in two days, I also slammed into the max level cap in just three days. Cap is currently just level 20. The next cap lock will apparently be at level 30 when the next content drop hits in August. That is a long time to be jammed up against zero content and a level cap. The only thing that I can progress right now is my gear level, which contributes to my overall power level score. My power level score is already well above the required amount for every last piece of level gated content in the game. In fact, I'm so powerful right now, I haven't so much as fainted or felt in genuine danger of death in quite some time now. Outside of, well, just getting unlucky with the tremendously bad server lag we're still experiencing. Between my power level, between my own personal skill with the game, and between what the game offers up for enemies, I just don't feel very threatened right now by anything. I mean, the combat is still fun against the enemies that do pose sort of a more imposing threat, like the world bosses and the big bosses and such. 
But even that is just a matter of mechanical issue. You learn the patterns, you attack when appropriate, you dodge when appropriate. It's it's fun and interesting enough, but nothing in the game feels like a challenge right now. I've got nothing to work towards, nothing to overcome, nothing to strive for. I can pretty mindlessly melt any enemy or group of enemies I come across, even if I'm absolutely alone in the field. So upping my gear score is pointless feeling right now. I mean, I know in a couple of months when the new content drops, there will be harder enemies, and at least some of it will be gated behind reaching certain gear power levels, but the agonizingly and boring slow grind to get there right now, well, it's not interesting, and I don't even know what number I'm reaching for. When do I know I've achieved it? So doing all this without knowing what the goal even is feels extremely unfulfilling and uninteresting. Luckily, I've had E3 to distract me for the past couple of days, so so I've only really logged into the game briefly in the evening to get my dailies done and maybe do an urgent quest if one happens to pop while I'm there. The only limitation I have right now is the rarity and difficulty in the in-the-game currency, New Meseta. That is the only thing I need to keep grinding for in order to upgrade my gear. I have oodles of other materials. I have so many other materials. I've literally been throwing a lot of it away, selling it off for a pittance because I literally do not have the storage space for it. I have so much junk ready to grind into my other weapons, the weapons I'm actually using, I don't have room for more of it. So even that, knowing I have more than enough resources to upgrade my gear, and getting more is super easy anyway, but being held back by the artificial restrictions of the currency and the ways of earning it feels pretty shit too, to be honest. The best way to earn currency is quests, but as I said, I have no quests left, just dailies which pay out like shit, or weeklies which do pay significantly better, but of course can only be redeemed once a week, because they're weeklies, aren't they? Plus, I've also been held back by certain daily quests being bugged, asking for like 10 of a collectible item from an area which doesn't spawn 10 of that item. And the respawn timer for the nodes that do make them are, well, the respawn is longer than a day, which means it's literally impossible to complete that quest because there's not enough stuff to collect in the time frame they give you to collect it. Then this is a known bug that everybody who's hit it has complained about and Sega are quote unquote looking into it. So between the utter dearth of end game content right now, the shitty way to progress in gear upgrading, it's time gated by your ability to earn any meaningful meseta through weekly quests, and the fact that I feel overpowered already for every last piece of existing grindable content, well, it all has the game feel less than compelling. Luckily, the kind of mindless grinding the game offers up is still pretty pleasant in its own right, really. Just spending an hour or two cycling through an area, popping PSC bursts to trigger world bosses and collecting rarer materials that they drop, it's still pretty fun, mechanically speaking. And mechanically, the game is fun, a pretty relaxing way to chill out in an evening with my brain at half power while I watch some content on my second screen and don't really think too much about the game. But without real goals to work towards, it's hard to feel engaged with the game in any meaningful way. This, compared to the much deeper and longer grinds that a lot of the best Western MMOs often, even at launch, feels very shallow. But it's also, like I said, common for Japanese MMOs to launch like this. The original PSO2 was no different. The difference is, when PSO2 got a Western release in May last year, it brought with it nearly eight years of content that had already been developed and folded into the Japanese version over that time. So the day one experience of PSO2 global release was not the PSO2 Japanese release state. We got so much more content ready to go, and we got that content faster, way faster than the Japanese version got it. But the good news is for New Genesis that unlike Western MMOs whose update schedules often just have one, maybe two significant updates a year, the history of PSO2 tells us it sees new story arcs, new chapters, new expansions, and smaller stuff like new events, new quests, special events, and you know, cross promotional tie and stuff happen far more regularly. It's a smaller but faster drip feed than a Western MMO usually sees. But it is still fair to judge New Genesis on its launch state because that's all we have to play right now and the next big content isn't coming for a month and a half, two months. 
And in this launch date, the content is extremely thin. Like I keep saying, I'm out of quests. I'm out of story. I'm out of real goals. Uh, I'm out of loot to chase as again, there's also very few weapon varieties available within each class. So I don't have a lot of variety to choose from there. There's not even any cosmetics to chase in the game yet. Every piece of cosmetic gear you can see in this footage from on, on, on other players and on my sword, for example, is from the old game bought forward. There's no new stuff at all, which is also frustrating for the new players who are only playing New Genesis, and it's causing a lot of FOMO and jealousy because, well, without going back to the old game and grinding away at that, they can't get these cool looking cosmetics. They can't customize the character in interesting ways. They're stuck with the default gear. And even if you do use the old gear to customize your character, you look worse anyway because you have to use the old character models for that old gear, not the new player models which are far more detailed and expressive. New Genesis is not a super good experience right now. Don't get me wrong, again, I still say try it. It is mechanically quite fun and the community here is unusually nice and fun loving for an MMO and more content is coming down the line. We already know this, but at the very least, if you do go in, go in knowing that it might be smarter not to rush through what little content there is here. I mean, I didn't rush, but I did play a lot of it in the first few days and I still capped out super fast way faster than I was expecting to, as a matter of fact. So, yeah, I'm not going to be one of those gamers who gets all pissy and aggressive about this stuff on the, on the Reddit or the forums or whatever, because those people, oh dear God, get a life, people. But I do feel like people should know what to expect, what they're getting in for here. It might help them feel less, well, annoyed by it all, I suppose. But anyway, I have been Blunty. Thank you very much for watching this all the way through. And this has been my update on how I'm feeling about the game uh, after its launch and after I've played a whole bunch of it. So, uh, yeah, let me know how you're going with it. What are you feeling? What are you thinking? How are you doing? What level are you up? Have you capped out yet? And thank you, as always, to the patrons scrolling up above there. Your above and beyond support is rather meaningful to me. Thank you ever so much for that, peoples. So I'm Blunty. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.